everyone, I'm here to do a little video, Ooh. meet my characters, and it's basically just me introducing you to my characters and what their relationships are and nothing about the whole story behind them or anything about their fantasy story, nothing like that, just basic like this is a character, this is how they act, and this is the relationships that my dolls have in between of them, like with each other, I guess. Um, so I was kind of doubting who I'm going to start with, and I think I guess I could start with Luna. So this is Lunaya, or Luna for short, um, and her last name is Mildenhall. So it's Lunaya Mildenhall. Um, and she is, well, she's she has a little accident where she loses her sight. I'm not going to go into it, but it does dramatically change the way she behaves, of course. Um, it is, um, it causes her to go a little bit more into herself and discover a little bit more who she is and what she wants as a person, rather than, um, like going with what the mainstream wants and um, she kind of starts to think about her own goals and things she wants in life instead of just going along with what society expects from her and going just like doing the thing that's conventional or that's easy um, and after the accident she kind of changes that opinion and kind of wants to be more brave in her decisions and not just go with what is easy but what she would rather have or rather want or what she stands for. Um, I think she's a very very honest character um, which does mean that not everyone likes her because she's not always going to say what you want to hear. Um, she's going to be honest about anything. If you ask her like how do I look today she's going to be dead honest. She's not going to say Oh, you look pretty today. No, she's gonna be like, well, you look like you haven't slept in days. Your hair is a mess, and you are wearing something that's fully dreadful. That's what she would say if if she really thinks that. If she thinks that you're actually looking great today, she's gonna say that as well. So that's kind of the idea behind her, um, and I think that that switch is something that at first she's very calm and well not calm it's more like um holding back and not really want to go into many situations she would rather stay out of it um but as she comes to learn she's able to see again in another way and that gives her confidence again and that's how she actually feels like now i can actually be who i want to be instead of going along with what society wants so that's Luna. I'm going to try to make her stand again, which will be a little bit of a challenge, but she should be able to. Because I kind of want her in frame, and I think if I sit her down in the back, she's not going to be able to be seen. She's standing on like kind of like a carpet, so it's not very secure. Okay, so Luna has an old, uh, a younger sister, sorry, <clears throat> a younger sister called Adelaide. Oh, by the way, um, this is an April story sleeping fall head modded by me on a, because it has elf ears and I did a little nose mod, um, on a Dolce to youth body, don't ask me which, I think it's three but I'm not sure. Um, it's like the same body Stacey and um, Christina are on, with like the long limbs. So this is her sister Adelaide. Oops. There you go. Um, and she's the younger sister. They don't have that much years between them. I think she's, um, she's like a year younger. I think if if it even is a year, because it went really fast. Um, and the reason that I'm kind of holding her, like, not very, I'm just showing the top of her, is because I'm going to talk about it in a second. Um, but she is a very hard character to describe. She is 
more like you have Luna who's going to be very very honest and then you have Adelaide who's going to be honest but he, who's going to try to always make it sound the way you want it so she's going to she's going to try to be honest about it but she doesn't want to hurt your feelings which Luna doesn't really care about she feels like you'd be better off with hearing what her honest opinion is but Adelaide's going to try and be friendly about it and she's going to try to give you the friendly answer so she's going to try to make it sound a little bit better if it's not that good but she's going to also maybe exaggerate a little bit when it's good she's going to say it's great like she's going to exaggerate a little bit um and i don't know she's always been like a little bit of an elusive character because i just i just can't seem to like get out the specific words of who is Adelaide and how does she act. Um, she's very hard for me to describe um, just because she acts in different ways depending on who it is. So the closer you are with her, the more she's just going to chatter with you, she's not going to hold anything back, she's going to just, you're just going to have a blast with her, she's going to be all like Playful is not really the right word, but she's going to want to play games with you. She's just going to be like fun loving. But when you don't know her, she's going to be a little bit like demure and composed. And I guess that's because the way she grew up, which is more like medieval fantasy style, like in a castle. So of course that comes into it um, because she is more like demure and more held back and she has to keep a certain posture. Um, just gonna take the crown off for a second. Um, and that plays into it. So I feel like she takes on the most, like, I don't know, I'm trying to find my words here, but it's, it's like whenever she steps into a room, the person who has the most influence, she's gonna adapt to that person and what she thinks they would like. Her to be like <laughs> if that makes sense so for instance if she steps into a room and some guy is sitting there and he would like her to be she thinks he likes flirty women like fun loving easy going she's gonna go more in that direction um, while I guess she's a little bit manipulative in that sense that she try to puts on an act instead of just being herself, which I guess is the reason why it makes it more difficult for me to actually figure out who she is, just because she often puts up that front. And now I'm gonna like show you. So she is pregnant and I made this belly for her yesterday. I thought it was kind of funny. Um, but I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, so she's the younger sister of Luna. Um, and she gets pregnant, which I'm only mentioning because it's going to result into another character, of course, um, being her son. Um, and his name is going to be Lysander. I'm not sure yet how I'm exactly going to pronounce it, probably going to give him a nickname. Because um, I feel like every time I say it, there's something not quite right about it. But I really like the name, I really like how it's written, so it's going to stick, but um, unless... I get a dolly for him and he's gonna be like, nope, that's not my name, then it might change, of course. Um, for right now, it's Lysander and I have her pregnant for now just because, I don't know, I kind of want to get a feel for it. I want to see how she's like. So that's kind of Adelaide. She's a little bit hard for me to describe just because I feel like I don't really have a good grasp on who she is. So that's her. I'm just gonna put her here. So younger sister of Luna, a little bit manipulative, and then I'm going to go to this girl. She is actually the half-sister of them. She's actually older. She's older than Luna is. I think she's about, say, like three years, maybe four years older. Um, and this is Nuria, or Numeria, in full. And um, she is um, related to them through their father. 
So it's a tradition in their culture, but like I said, I'm just going to go into the relationships for now. Um, so she's their half-sister, which is kind of interesting because she looks nothing like them. Um, I guess she takes all her looks from her mother, who she strongly resembles. I think the only thing that she doesn't really um, share with her mother is the colour of her, her, of her eyes. Sorry. Okay, that's better. There was like a little hair in front of her face and it was bothering me. Um, as you can see, she has bright blue eyes. I'm not sure if she has in the story, but I just really like them in the doll, so I might change that. I think she has green eyes in the story, but maybe I'm just going to make them really pale green because that would fit as well. So, Nuria is... Um, she is quite a shy character, actually. You wouldn't think that maybe from her outfit, it's kind of loud with a lot of colours um, and a little bit spunky, like the... I'm not sure how you call it, I think, like, kind of checkered, but it's not really checkered. Um, stockings, and then with the red in the shoes, and then this very loud print on her jacket, and then, like, with the fur and with the braids and the fur thing on her head. You might think she's very loud and outgoing, but she's not really. She's she's actually kind of quiet and composed and like controlled, I guess. You wouldn't really see her going out talking to strangers or just going out for for like a party or she think that's a little bit of a waste of time. Um she would only go to a party if it's like politically important to go there which again sorry sorry but um let me just get back to core character stuff um so like i said um with adelaide she only really talks to people she really knows and she's great friends with nuria even though she doesn't really know her, that's her half sister um she only finds that out later but she considers her like a best friend um, and so when they are together they talk all the time they gossip they make jokes they, they kind of play around like two sisters would I guess um, and so that's kind of their dynamic but with other people she's really quiet and doesn't really she only speaks to them if they have approached her first and asked her like a question that she thinks she should answer but if they come to her and just want to like do small talk she she doesn't do small talk she's like come on really if you want to ask me something just go for it but if you don't want to ask me something and you just want to like blabber about something go to someone else like that's kind of the attitude she has so she's quiet and not really speaking but she can be like feisty if you kind of agitate her with things um, she can be very snappy, I guess is the word, maybe. Um, but to people she knows, she's very open and fun-loving, I guess. But I don't know. It's She also has a little bit of turmoil in her childhood. And I guess that also plays in to the fact that she doesn't want to... She doesn't really want any other trouble from other people. So she's like, keep your stuff with you. I'll keep mine to me and we're going to be good. Like that's kind of, and the main, also a big thing is concealing emotions. She is not about sharing emotions. So you wouldn't hear her talk about emotions unless it's concern about Adelaide. That's the only thing she'll express. But fear, like things like that, no way no way she's not gonna she's not gonna express it she's not gonna talk about it only if you force it out her like she absolutely has to because it's gnawing at her like crazy and someone has actually noticed it she might have like a mental breakdown and pour it all out like you would if you bottled it up like that so that's her um she's a little devil inside i guess like that can go bad if you bottle everything up. Okay, please stand up. It's not ideal to stand them up in this because it, the the flooring is is like fabric that's still crinkled, and so it's not ideal to put dolls on. 
Ooh, you're a far stretch. I'm gonna take these shoes off because they're basically just dangling. They're EID shoes. They're huge. But they're the only thing I have because she took back those little shoes. I feel like my hair is coming loose. I'm just gonna take out the little clip because I feel it like falling down. I don't know. It's kind of annoying. Sorry. Ooh. Okay. So next character is the la oops, the last of my collection, but I have two extra characters I want to talk about after this one that I don't have in my collection now, but see myself shelling in the future. So this is the last character doll, I guess. Um, so this is Haljin. Oh, by the way, um, Nuria's last name is Riven. So she's called Numeria Riven. So we have Lunaya Mildenhall, Adelaide Mildenhall, and then, strangely actually, Numeria Riven. She takes the name of her mother, so she doesn't take her father's name because... Ooh, I have like a strange little crinkle in my hair. Uh, she takes the name of her mother because that's the custom, and of course, that's a story thing. So, <clears throat> sorry if you can't stand the cracking, but those were her legs I was stretching out. So, this is Haldrin. As you might be able to tell, he's a lot older than the rest of them. He's also a Mildenhall, um, and now I do have to share a little story thing. He's much, much older, like a lot older than the rest of them, because he's, I have no idea how old he is, I haven't done the math to actually figure it out, but he's like ancient, like absolute ancient, um, and that's because in their family they have this little ritual that they can to do, sorry, that makes them not age as much, um, and it makes that they have longer lives. And that's the reason why Uncle Haldrin is still alive. So he's a far, far uncle. It's like the, their great, great, great grandfather's brother. It's kind of like that. I haven't correctly like figured out how much great greats in there but it's like far away so they call him Haldrin because it's no longer like an uncle it's so far away that it's like great 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 grandfather uncle whatever thing of a jiggy so they just call him Haldrin so that's him so he's related to everyone that I have here it's one big family so that was kind of crazy I realized that and I was like damn all my characters are related that's weird um but I guess it's not because it kind of revolves around this family in my story so I guess that makes sense so to kind of like recap again this is a far uncle and they have the oldest sister Lunaya the younger sister Adelaide and then the oldest actually step or like half sister Nuria and so Haldrin I'm gonna talk about his character now for a little bit he is, I guess he takes a little bit like Nuria, he's more quiet, but he's very studious and you, every time I look at him, I feel like he's thinking about something. He's thinking out a theory, he's trying to figure out some problem that is going on, or he's trying to find out new ways to actually be more effective and blah blah blah. He just loves thinking, I guess. He's very studious. Because um, he's kind of taken upon him to study as much as he can. I really like the nose profile. It's a little dent here because he's frowning so much. Um, and I don't know, he's kind of... He's kind of like the character that just sits quietly in the background. But unlike Nuria, there's no like burning fire beneath him. There are a few topics that he could get very feisty about. But most of the time, he's kind of like the the grumpy old man in the background that no one really pays attention to. It's kind of like that, like the one that's always reading a book. And so, but when it comes to it, he, he will step up and take up the lead and do what is asked of him. And he'll be there in the shadows. He's not really, he's not really the person to be on the front line, I guess. He's more like a background person in his own mind. Though he does often take like a very like leader position which does mean he has to be like on the front line but he tries not to if he can avoid it and family is very important to him and that plays in of course with a story but of course it's 
very much a characteristic of him that he just cares a lot about his family and that it means a lot to him and family always comes first in his mind and not even himself not even his closest relatives but just family in general like the whole extended family is important and that also means Nuria that also means other like bastards that run around they all belong to the family so they're all important and I guess he's like the fatherly figure because their father passes away when they're really like they're not young but they never meet him and he kind of takes on that role of being their father being that person that they can trust and can go to if they have a problem um, so that hit that's him sorry and then like I said I have two other characters I want to quickly mention and that is the baby that's gonna come Lysander and he's gonna have his father is actually not the man she marries so both of the sisters marry at some point she's gonna marry a man who she's gonna divorce again because it's a very unhappy marriage um, and they do have a little accident that happens uh, he kind of passes away in a little accident and then her husband um, she doesn't really spend much time with him just because of what happens and circumstances um, and she ends up taking a little slippy slide relationship um, with another man called Elijah and Elijah is a character that's always been there but never really stepped up and been like hi I want to come home I'm this character and I've kind of been feeling that lately that itch that he's there now and that he's willing to come home I guess um, and tell me his story and I think once Elijah's here he's gonna open up as well because he's always very quiet I think I need to sway his neck because it's quite awkward um, but he's always very quiet and he's, I feel like it's kind of still brooding like I sit him in the chair and he just sits there like thinking about stuff like brooding in the background and I feel like once Elijah's here I, I, I have such a blast writing a scene with them together because they have so much fun. They've known each other for so long because Elijah is, he's not the same race, but uh, he's an elf and he's something else. And um, Elijah also has the whole like longer age thing. I'm not going to go into it too much, but so then they've known each other for like really, really long time. And that just makes for an incredible friendship. And it's such a blast to write about them because they have so much freaking fun. And like you can see how much it makes me smile to just think of them. And I feel like I have finally figured out who they are. And it's kind of interesting. So we have Lysander who I guess you already know because I've been talking about it. Um, I hope to be the, or I hope him to be the Dolce Robin which I'm hoping to be by next week. Um, I'm just holding off a little, want to think about it, make sure it's not like an impulse buy. Um, and I'm still kind of with a skin tone. I think it's going to be Copper Orient, which is quite dark, but I, I'm hoping it'll work out because um, I feel like Orient is a little bit too uh, white or too pale. Pale is the word I was looking for. Um, he needs to be a little bit darker because Elijah is... Um, he's not really dark he's more like a tan I guess um, but he definitely has some color to his skin um, and I think Elijah is the doll she are seeing and they look a lot like each other those two dolls um, so that's kind of exciting but I cannot afford Elijah now so Elijah's gonna have to go on the back burner but she's definitely on my mind and I feel like I feel like those two are always the ones that I've been like trying to figure out who to get. Um, definitely Lysander, he was like a very distant character but I've kind of caught up with the story now and at that point that he's coming, or he's here actually, he's in the story, he's already been born. Um, and so I feel like it's, it's time to move things along and I feel like my characters, I feel like I don't really know them until I feel like they can interact and Elijah is such an important character because he interacts with everyone in the story 
he meets them at several points when they're like not in a great place and he kind of talks them out of it out of things and he he's a great friend to everyone so that's another character so I think I think I've mentioned everyone now I hope it kind of gives you an idea of who they are um, I, I'm, I have such a difficult time defining my characters when I'm talking about them so I always go to the story because that's easier for me and so this was not really an easy video for me to make because it's very hard to get across who they are and I hope that how they how I present them with clothes and, and, and hair and all the makeup and stuff that you can get a sense of them so I hope this was kind of interesting for you all um, I hope I didn't blab on too much. I'm just going to put this guy back into his little chair in the corner right here. So he can brood on about his life until Elijah gets here. And then he can have fun as well. So I thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great day. And love you all. Bye.